Good day everyone and welcome back to the channel if you're joining me once again. Today we're going to talk about the ogres that appeared in 8th edition. This is a rather controversial edition because some players were aware that the end time books were on the horizon and Warhammer was going to be changed into Age of Sigma for better or for worse. No, 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 no. That's up to you to decide. Uh, I kind of understand why they did it, but I think it's a shame that we had to lose one game in order to gain another one. They couldn't have had it parallel. But going from that, let's talk about the Ogres in 8th edition, which was the last edition of Warhammer Fantasy Battle up until Old World, which has no Pacific date and might never arrive because reasons. What? And that's not a rumour, that's just me being a pessimist. So, what changed in 8th edition? The first thing that we got in 8th edition is we got a few new units for the Ogres, which are probably going to appear in Total War. The first thing that we got was Firebellies. Firebellies are a fire wizard for the Ogres, whereas previously they only had Ogres who had a sort of weird buff slash food magic, they gained a new wizard which could be up to level 2 which had the law of fire. They were called fire bellies because they worshipped a, a volcano and they had a rather interesting model which was cool but it was during this time that Finecast made its appearance and therefore oh, no! models were very hit and miss with the way that they cast or printed the fine cast which was very very temperamental and very very dodgy whether you got a decent or, or a lame version but they were the suckiest bunch of sucks that ever sucked but going from that it was an interesting sculpt fire bellies are probably going to be one of the heroes that we'll get for the ogre fraction unknown how it will work it might work like the assassin or something like that or it might just be a, another generic wizard or that you can have as a character Ogres are not exactly smart, but the wizards tend to be the smartest of them because they're able to conjure magic and, and stuff like that. Then we have Mournfan Cavalry. This replaced the Forge World Cavalry that they did for a while and made them a sort of like hyena esque dog thing with like tusks. It, they were very strange creatures. They were called Mournfangs, of course, and this enabled the Ogres to have pistols on a cavalry model that was a little bit faster than the regular Ogres. What else did we get in 8th edition that we can have a look at? We got Iron Blasters, which were an artillery unit, which basically had a big cannon. It was pulled by the same Rhinox as the Scrapper Launchers, which the Noblars use. The Iron Blasters were a sort of ogre one with a kind of Noblar crew, but when you looked at it, taking it, you had to choose whether you moved or fired. It was a rather stationary piece of artillery, a bit like other artillery pieces, but in my opinion, the Scrapper Launcher was always the better of the two artillery pieces, not only thematically, but how it worked. Stonehorns. Stonehorns were a mount for hunters, which gave them a beast mount, which this was the edition where they started to have like centerpiece models and Stonehorns were one of them. I quite like the Stonehorns design with the sort of like skull face. Stonehorns are a massive, massive mount and they're quite interesting in their design. It's sort of mammoth-esque with other creatures for going the ears instead of large side tusks. And then we had the Thunder Tusks which were a sort of rhino-esque creature, basically the same kit as the stone horns but it, with a different face and this one was more like a unit creature where you'd have two individuals, one with a crossbow, one with a sort of like man catcher chain bear trap thingy, so it was a sort of like beast unit with the ogres, I mean it was pretty good but it's one of those things that, did they really need a monster in an army of monsters? Of course, Grizz's Gold Tooth returned. Gold Flag. Now, Gold Flag was a character that appeared in 1st and 2nd edition Warhammer Fantasy Battle. He was 
then reappeared in, I think it was either 5th or 6th in the Dogs of War book, and then he reappeared in the Ogre book in 8th edition. His model was pretty cool, I quite enjoyed the 8th edition model, because it was, I like the uh, back banner that he had, like a big mouth back banner. Again, this is one of those models, when end times hit, it was just basically turning to a mana heater, it was basically... Ugh. This was one of those models when the end times hit, it was basically just turned into a man eater and then after they started to phase out fine cast because of the obvious problems with it and produce more plastic models, Gold Flag was one of the ones that they quietly retired or I've not seen him on the store. If he's still there, he might be hidden but I haven't really paid attention enough to um, care since they removed Throg. Brag the Gutsman. Brag the Gutsman is an interesting idea as he's a sort of executioner for the ogres. He goes around with a special sort of like hook monster or great gout gouger as it's called. It's called a polax, but polaxes tend to not have chains and hooks on the end. Brag is sent out to kill enemies that make enemies of powerful tyrants. He is basically an executioner. He wears like an executioner's hood. He's a very imposing model and he's very interesting because he brings a new aspect to ogre culture that they kind of didn't have. It gives them a lot more introspective characters like Tyrants will send, Brag the Gutsman will execute people. I will say this though, in this edition Noblars were sort of toned down to the extent they are in Age of Sigma. They were still there in the background, they still had the stories of them, they still had the idea that they were pet slash emergency food, but they were very toned down. We did have Scrag returning. Now, as I've said, the two possible lords are Grease the Skulltooth and Scrag the Slaughterer, but there is nothing stopping them from bringing Gold Flag Maneater or Brag the Gutsman into the game at a later date. I would think if they did brag the Gutsman as a legendary lord, it would be interesting for him to have some sort of like followers that have a similar sort of weapon. But it really depends on how things go with um, what lords they introduce. It might just have the two for for that race until a later date when we get one of the um, free packs or expansions. Ogres tended to, as I've said in my previous video, be a sort of like multi-wound infantry army, but this time they were backed up with some cavalry units, with some monster units, and a new artillery piece, which gave them um, some new ways to fight and play. How this will play out in the Total War game we have yet to be seen. We do know that Ogres are certainly going to be a powerful army because of how they are portrayed. They are big models in themselves and you did not need many models to make an army. I will add a couple of things though before I um, wrap up the video. I think although Finecast was a problem for some models in 8th edition and 7th towards the end, the models that it did give us with the ogres were kind of cool. Of course, when you have little bits of blood and gore dropping off an axe, with fine cast that makes it almost, well, a very, very weak point. Going into plastic models that we do now, those points where you get drips and stuff are common breakages, but they are a little more fixable with plastic than they were with fine cast and metal, of course. The fire belly, of course, with his pluming smoke and flame is really cool as well. But I will say this, the Mourn Fangs are probably the most disappointing unit. While they did give Ogres a cavalry unit, largely they were expensive. You got three to five models, as I remember, and they were really not doing anything that man eaters didn't really do, except give them a better speed buff. So, in my opinion, it was probably better to choose man eaters rather than the uh, Mournfang Cavalry. 
in my opinion. But then again, they did look okay in, in retrospect, you know. Maybe it is rose tinted goggles in some respects, you will remember things more fondly sometimes, even though the rules of them might have been garbage compared to other things, but they are still around in Age of Sigma, of course, and they're a bit different now with their rules and such, with certain things being retired. But, but I will add uh, a couple of things before I go. Giants were a big part of Ogres, and they probably will get them. Having a giant in your army is probably one of the better things that Ogres can do, simply because of the amount of carnage a giant can bring to the battle. In my opinion, from an old Warhammer Fantasy battle player, the units to watch for are going to be Man-Eaters, maybe a Thunder Tusk, or a Stonehorn. Your Lead Belchers are probably going to be needed for the giving the army some range, especially if you're going to be fighting Dwarves or Elves or something that can have a lot of range, you're going to need something to fire back. But saying that, you are a multi-wound army, you are going to last significantly longer than humans in close combat and in ranged, but, but you are going to suffer from smaller armour counts, so they very rarely had heavy armour, save for maybe the Iron Guts or Tyrant. Their, their ward saves are okay, but you are going to suffer quite badly. I will note that Yetis are going to be interesting in Total War. It will be nice to see what they do with them, considering as the models were awful, and they were in they were in sixth edition as well. But the models were just awful, just horrible. Um, the same with Gorgeous, really. They were just really weird. They would look like big ghouls, in my opinion. Which, from the law point of view, they were basically orphans who didn't have a belly gut when they were born, and they were just thrown into tunnels. So they survived in being like this weird cannibalistic, almost blind, like. Uh, are you familiar with the, um, there's like an urban legend about this sort of creature that is like paled face and skin and um, lives in dark tunnels and it's just ravenous by hunger. Um, I think it's a skinwalker or something along those lines, but, but that's what they remind me of, that type of thing. But yes, um, not quite as grim as the previous episode, but... I will note that it gave us some more wizards, so fire bellies. It gave us some monster units in the Thunder Tusk and Stonehorn. It gave us a new artillery piece with the Iron Blaster, and it gave us Mornfan cavalry. It also gave us the return of Golf Like Man Eater, a very famous mercenary from first or second edition Warhammer Fantasy. And then in 5th or 6th edition, he had a horrible model, but it, we did have a model in there. And then again in 8th. It's a shame really that this edition brought back such a um, significant character, only to have him quietly uh, removed at a later date with Age of Sigma. Again, I do like Brad the Gutsman. He was an interesting idea. Again, Age of Sigma scene made him go away. It is a real shame that we had all these cool ideas floating around in 7th and 8th, not only with the Ogres, with the High Elves, with their flying chariots, with the Fleet Masters for the Dark Elves, with the units for Wood Elves that they started to bring in with the um, like Stag Cavalry. They brought a lot back from the earlier editions only to quietly push them out. I think that in some ways they were trying to do a last hurrah with the with 8th edition, but in a lot of ways I think it made a lot of people annoyed because some of them could see the writing on the wall, some of the rumours that we had back then was telling us this edition is going to be the last and the world will blow up. People didn't believe it of course because it was such a preposterous rumour that no one really thought that it could be done, but it was. And then we have Age of Sigma, which is a whole different thing, and um, as I've said, I will be doing the end times and looking at some Age of Sigma lore a bit later on. There is one more video to go in the Warhammer 
Total War series for Total Warhammer 3, which is I'll be looking at the very old Kislev army book that was given away in White Dwarf. I do have um, that available, so I will be making a note on that, on which legendary lords we could be seeing in Kislev, but there's only really two or three characters that they can use in law, so they'll probably see I will probably have to make some up. So that's it, that's been Ogre Kingdom's 8th edition, I've been Trix, you've been you, um, I hope that you enjoyed this video, if you did, great, if you didn't, also great, thank you all for your time and bye bye.